When you get questions from new investors, what's your advice to them? Um, well, it sort of depends how you want to invest. I think that uh, there's nothing wrong with passive investing, and for a lot of investors, that's great. You know, if you put your half your money in a in a stock uh, ETF and half your money in a you, you go 50% in SPY, 50% in TLT, you're gonna do you're gonna beat a lot of people who are paid a lot of money, <laughs> uh, and that's fine. There, there's nothing wrong with that a, at all. Uh, now, for investors who enjoy it and, and like to be part of the investing game. Uh, which I am, not everybody is, but so people who are invested, who are interested in that, uh, then my advice is look for um, companies that aren't followed by everybody else. Go off the beaten path. Everybody's got an opinion about Google. You know, everybody's got an opinion about Exxon or you know, all these companies. There, there's 40 analysts who follows it. Uh, there are hundreds of companies that aren't followed by a single analyst. These are uh, orphan stocks. Yep. And you know, it's not worth it to, to Wall Street. I'll, I'll give you an example, and um, let me preface, I'm not uh, recommending this, but uh, uh, the small company called Nicholas Financial, which I, I write about a lot, it's not covered by any analysts. And I made a few calls, talked to the people there. You call them, you say, I'd like to ask them questions. Some companies, sure, they'll, they'll be happy to talk to you. Nobody could call you <laughs> your job and ask you about it. Uh, you can read the financials, and it doesn't take long, and you know as much as anybody. Mm -hmm. And this company really impressed me by what they did. And I, I felt like I was uh, a kid in a candy store. Nobody knew about this company. They, they, uh, they, they make uh, used car loans, uh, car loans for, for, for used cars. And with that, you can charge about 25% in certain states. So they have, I'll give you some rough numbers, about, uh, about $270 million in used car loans. Uh, they get about 25% on that, so that's $68 million coming in the door each year. Uh, they're about $100 million in debt, and that's at 5%. So think about that spread they're getting. So it's 68 million coming in the door, 5 million going out. So you're netting 63 million. Uh, the total operations to run the business is about 27 million. So that brings you down to about 36 million. And then taxes, which is a big hit, that's about another 14 million. So last year they clear, cleared about $22 million and they have uh, 12 million shares outstanding. It's a tiny company. I mean, this is, Citigroup is a thousand times larger <laughs> than them. But they made a dollar eighty-five a share. At their March '09 low, they were at a dollar eighty-five, right about that. So they were trading one times earnings, n not one year out, not two years out, but the, between the second, between twenty-four and thirty-six months out, yeah. they were trading at one times earnings, and nobody knew that. And, and I think they were dumped in. People thought they were uh, a subprime lender, yeah. and they at no point were they losing money. At no point, they, they turned a profit every single quarter. And people were treating it, I mean, they, they really were going at, at, at pennies on the dollar. And uh, the stock was at $1.85, and uh, now it's at, at twelve fifty today, and I still think uh, it's a bargain. I think it should be at least $17, $18. Hmm. It's the, uh, the one up on Wall Street, Peter Lynch, I think his example is Pet Boys. It had, it had a silly yes. name, nobody followed it. It's, it was, too, it's too goofy to, yeah. to even follow. You know, who thinks that it could, it could, be, that, uh, could be that profitable?